Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we're going to be reviewing the GNDL Kiloton Fretless from the Tribute series. Let's check it out. This is the GNDL Kiloton Fretless from the Tribute series. We're finally looking at a kiloton and I'm very excited. Big thank you to GNDL for sending me over this review sample to borrow to review. So thank you so much GNDL, I really appreciate it. Let's go over the specs of the GNDL kiloton from the Tribute series. The body is very interesting. Though it appears to be ash, we have an ash front on a poplar back. That's right, this is a poplar body with an ash top both for weight and cost savings, I assume. And I think that was a wise choice as my GNDL LB100, which I reviewed a little while ago, was over 11 pounds. So it's nice that they're trying to get the weight of these bases under control because weight is definitely a big factor for many players. So this body is finished in a three-tone sunburst and that is paired with a tort pick guard. I think this is a beautiful pairing, it looks great. However, this is the only finish available for the Kiloton Fretless. Alongside this though, the fretted model has some new finishes available as well as block inlays on some of those finishes, so be sure to check those out as well. I'm looking forward to reviewing the fretted model in the future, but for now we are actually checking out the fretless as my first kiloton encounter. The pickup is the GNDL MFD pickup, and this thing is powerful. Pair to a passive volume and tone control and a three-way toggle switch for series, parallel, and single coil, we have a lot of tones at our fingertips. And the positioning of the pickup is very interesting because this is more in the Stingray position versus something like the L1000 like I have, uh, it's a USA base, the L1000 CLF, which has the pickup more in the P base position. So interesting pickup placement here. The bridge is the GNDL locking high mass cool looking bridge and these are just really awesome bridges. Moving on to the neck, this is a maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard. 34 inch scale with 21 hypothetical frets. Hypothetical. <laughs> Credit to my girlfriend for coming up with that in a video way long ago. That was the Portamento video. Check it out, it's a funny one. <laughs> we have an inch and a half or 38 millimeter nut width and a C-shaped neck profile, very similar to that of a jazz bass. Up at the headstock, we see the typical GNDL headstock shape. I'm not too big of a fan of that. Honestly, I like the CLF headstock better, but it is what it is. And we have four in-line tuners. These are the GNDL in-house tuners. Very solid tuners, especially for what this base costs, which is around $649 to $699. A very nice offering overall from the Tribute series. Now let's go ahead and turn this base around. Around back, we see the difference in grain here because this is a poplar body with the ash top. So we got the beautiful ash grain on the front and the poplar grain on the back, which is also good looking, but not nearly as good looking as the ash. There's no control cavity back here as everything is routed underneath the pick guard. And we have a four screw neck attachment. Now the L and M series bases have a six screw. So it's interesting that the uh, Kiloton uses a four screw like the JB series. We also see the back of this maple neck here and the GNL tuners up at the headstock. I previously mentioned the body materials here for weight savings. Has it paid off? What does this kiloton fretless weigh? It weighs 9.4 pounds on my scale, around nine and a half pounds, which is significantly less than the LB100 tribute series, which weighed over 11 pounds. So overall, a very decently weighted instrument. I would not call this a boat anchor by any means. And how much does the GNDL Kiloton Fretless cost? I believe this base comes in at around $649 or $699, somewhere in that range, depending on where you're buying it from. I see several listings on Reverb, however, I know this base has been highly coveted since its launch due to its great specs, but we all know specs aren't everything. How does this base sound and play? Let's go ahead and find out. You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Tuning, mm -hmm. important. Important it is.
This is a fun bass. The C-shaped neck profile and the narrow nut width, this jazz bass-ish neck profile, really makes it a just a joy to play. You can glide up and down the neck and it's not chunky or clunky or cumbersome or anything. This is just mwah, beautiful. <laughs> As you can hear, this MFD pickup is a very hot and heavy, a lot of output, and this is in parallel mode, meaning this isn't even the hottest setting. We have the volume at 100% and the tone at 100%. Those are the only controls we have. Now, one thing I wish GNL would use more, um, even make like an import version of, is the L1000 circuit, the passive two-band uh, EQ thing. I love that. I love that in my GNDL L1000. The ability to tame the bass, especially on OMG mode, where you have, it's almost like a series with a, a capacitor or something through one of the coils, but you get a lot of output there, and being able to tame the bass really makes it a lot more usable of a mode. Or series here is a little bit hot. I'll show you that in a second, but let's play more of this. <laughs> fretless and I just love it. This rosewood fingerboard feels great and it is not too soft so it's not really like absorbing the sound and like deadening it. You really can just glide all over this and get some glorious moi and fretless tones out of this. <laughs> For strings, we are using the SIT Stay In Tune Nickel Foundations, 45 to 105, and they sound great on here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take the tone down to about 50% now with the pickup in parallel. And here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> Very nice. Let's take the tone back up all the way and flip the switch over into single coil mode. Now, this is true single coil. There's no hum canceling. So in a noisy environment, you are definitely going to be getting some noise. And I don't think there's really any shielding either. I haven't looked under the pick guard. So here's what single coil sounds like with the tone all the way up at 100%. Next, we're going to take the tone down to 50%. Here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> and finally, here is series. Now, brace yourselves for this because this is spicy. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Here's the tone at 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. Next, let's go back to parallel and I will turn the tone all the way up. Now, my assessment of the three tones, I like the single coil and I like parallel. However, series, I find almost unusable because of its high output. I guess I could turn the volume down, but I see no real tonal benefit there, especially for an instrument like this. I wish that there was that L1000 circuit. Obviously that would make this a kind of different instrument and put it in a different price tier. And you could probably get that done in the USA custom shop. But I think that that circuit is really awesome and could tame this series mode and make it a much more usable mode overall. Where right now it's simply just too hot in my opinion. Next, I'm gonna grab my pick. Let's see what this sounds like with a pick. <laughs> And how does this thing slap? Keeping the pickup in parallel mode, tone all the way open, let's slap it. Honestly, for a fretless, I think it slaps pretty nicely. We can get nice low action on this, and the fretboard responds very nicely to the slaps. I've played plenty of fretless instruments that just weren't slappers, but this is not one of them. You can really get some nice tone and some nice feedback out of it, you know. I find slap is like, the, 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 the instrument has to kind of play back to you. You're playing the instrument, but it kind of has to dance with you a little bit, and having an instrument that can slap well, goes a long way in terms of being able to, to play what you want to play from your head to the sounds, to the fingerboard. You, you know what I'm saying. Words. Now, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. <laughs> So here are my final thoughts on the GNL Kiloton Fretless from the Tribute series. Overall, I really like this bass a lot. I think this is an excellent package, and for the mid $600 to high $600 price point, you get a lot of bass here, especially for a passive instrument. I think that the GNL Tribute series overall is a very nice series of instruments. It's GNL's import line, and I feel like there's very little compromises between these instruments and the USA ones overall. I think that they do a good job instilling the GNL spirit and like the GNL experience into these more affordable instruments. 
awesome package overall. Very, very good base. I do wish that the series mode was a bit more usable. There's way more output than the single coil or parallel modes, and, and I wish there was something like the L1000 control circuit to tame that a bit, but we don't have that here. I guess you could turn the volume down, but eh. <laughs> Just my thoughts on that. Outside of that item though, with the series mode, I think that everything else is just a great package here. The Kiloton as a base definitely plays well as a fretless model, and I think the pickup placement and just the use of materials here with the rosewood fingerboard make this just a great sounding base. I also really appreciate what they did for weight savings doing the poplar and ash body versus making this a straight ash body, which would have been like 11 pounds. I know a lot of people have complained about some of the GNL tribute series being very heavy with the ash body, so it's nice that they took that into consideration here. So what am I going to rate the GNL kiloton fretless from the tribute series? Yeah! I'm gonna rate this base. Four claws out of five. This is an excellent value and an excellent base, and I'm very excited to check out more of the kilotons in the Tribute series, and maybe a USA one in the future. The hardware, the electronics, and the build and the quality of the components, everything is just top notch. And for the $649 to $699 price point, you have a lot of base here, especially if you're looking for a fretless. Great job, GNDL. You have yourself a winner here. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the GNL Kiloton Fretless from the Tribute series. And as always, until we groove again.